Clean Code Functions Part 2. Clean Code is readable, reusable, and refactorable software in JavaScript. This is part two of how to write clean functions in JavaScript. Special thanks to Ryan Dermott for a lot of the code in this video. Check the description for his original article on the topic. You should always avoid side effects. A function produces a side effect if it does anything other than take a value in and return another value. Side effects could be many things, including writing to a file or modifying some global variable. Here's an example. So we have let name equals bocarns, function split name into first and last name, name equals name.split. If we run the function and if we console.log the name, we're going to see um, the, the split name up here. But look, it's changing the, the global variable name to split it up. So now we cannot access the initial variable anymore. So a better way to do it would be like this. And now if we run that, you can see it's consoling that log bocarns and then it's consoling log the split bocarns here because we still have the original name and now we have the new name because this function did not change a global variable. It just gave back one, one value. Okay, the next thing is that you don't want to write to global functions. Uh, polluting globals is a bad practice in JavaScript because you could clash with another library. So an example of this is if you're trying to uh, extend one of JavaScript's native ar array methods. So for instance, It's not really good to add to this global function, arrays the global fu function, so we, we don't want to, to just add diff to the array prototype. A better way would to just use classes and extend the array global. So I'm going to make this into a class. And there we go, we just extended the array global. Next thing is that you should favor functional programming over imperative programming. Now JavaScript is not a completely functional programming language like some languages, but functional languages are cleaner and easier to test. So let me give you an example of just how you can um, change something from imperative to functional. So this is an imperative um, programming section. So we, we have this constant where we are going to have the, the name and the lines of code for each, uh, for each person. And then we have let total output equals zero, and then we're going to have a for loop here. For let i equals zero, i is less than programmer output dot length i plus plus total output plus equals programmer output um, index i dot lines of code. So it's it's adding up all the the outputs of lines of code. So a way we can change this so it's more functional is we're not going to have a for loop here. We're going to we're going to change this to an initial value. And then we're going to take out this for loop. Okay, instead of the for loop, we have just this one line. Const total output equals programmer output. We're going to map this to the lines of code. And then we're going to reduce all those lines of code um, by, by putting them all together. The x plus lines of code. We're going to start at zero. So using map and reduce helps make your code more functional. Next thing is encapsulate conditionals. So here's the bad way to do it, where we're just going to have this, it's going to say if, and there's going to be a conditional here. So a better way to do this would be to um, take this out, and I'm going to make this into a function called should So now the conditional is, is a function, so that makes it easier to read. Next up, avoid negative conditionals. Here's the bad way to do it. We're going to see is DOM node not present node, and then we're going to say is not. This means not is DOM node not present. So it makes more sense just to take out the not, and then you don't have a negative conditional. The next one sounds pretty crazy at first, but it's just avoid conditionals altogether. The way you can do things without an if statement or a conditional is to use polymorphism to achieve the same thing. And the reason why you'd want to do that is because functions should really only do one thing. So if you have an if statement, then you're doing a lot of things with your function. So for instance, if I have this class airplane, uh, get cruising altitude, uh, we're going to have a switch conditional. So if, so if the type is 777, we're going to return um, 
this, but if it's Air Force One, we're going to return this, but if it's the Cessna, we're going to return this. However, there is a way we could do that with polymorphism. So I'm just going to leave the, the old way of doing it and then put this new way right below it. So we're going to have the class airplane, but then we're going to extend it. Class Boeing 777 extends airplane, class um, Air Force One extends airplane, class Cessna extends airplane, and then we have a different get cruising altitude function for each um, each class of airplane. So instead of using the switch statement, we can use polymorphism, and then we don't have to have the switch statement. So that's just an example of how you can avoid conditionals to make your code more readable. And the last one I'm going to talk about is to remove dead code. This is pretty straightforward. If there's code that you're not using anymore, just remove it. So just in this example, um, we're only using this new request module. We're not using the old request module. So we can just take it out. You're always going to have um, you're always going to have it in your version history if you still need it. So there's no reason just to leave it in there just in case. Well, thanks for watching JS Nuggets. My name is Bo Carnes. Please subscribe and remember, use your code for good.